Hello friends, Pastor Joe McGarry here from Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Kensington, Connecticut. I am so glad that you are here today. This is the second Sunday after Christmas, so we are currently in the 12 days of Christmas, and that will end on Wednesday, which is Epiphany, which we will celebrate next Sunday. So welcome to Christmas. We are still in the midst of Christmas, and I am so glad that you are joining us today. I know many of you watch this service through its entirety from beginning to end, but if you don't, I'm going to make this ask here at the beginning. We are setting a goal this year for our online contributions. So we are asking here at the very beginning of the service, if you have been watching our service, if you have been participating in our online ministry to consider giving us a gift. So in a couple of months, we are going to be doing these online services for almost an entire year. And we are so thankful for all the connections we have made for all of you who have been watching us either from the very beginning or maybe even if this is your first time joining us here online. But I ask that you um, consider making a financial gift to the church this year. We are setting some goals around our engagement here online. Uh, we would love to hear more from you, to learn more about you, to grow in relationship with you. Um, and one of the first steps that you can take if you have been joining us for a while is to make a financial gift uh, to the church. You can either send that directly to the church, and I'll put that address here online, or you can go to our website and give through a credit or debit card, and I will put that somewhere up here as well. Um, so either one would be great. Also, if you would like to learn more about the church, you can go to our website, popkensington.org. And there you can find a variety of things to help you grow in your relationship with God, to continue to connect with the church. And there's a space for you to send me a direct message so I can learn a little bit more about you. Thank you so much again for joining us and let us begin our worship service. Peace, our world is true. 
troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your words alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be Your bread broken for others, shed unto all our fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling place among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness, God of loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and we have sinned against our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to live a new life. We have turned away from the lowly and the downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive our sins. The sins that we know and the sins that are only known to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people with all who come to the manger, rejoicing in this gift of grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being 
In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has been made known to Him. The Gospel of the Lord. I have always thought it was interesting how the Gospel writer John starts his Gospel. He says, in the beginning. Does that sound familiar? Of course it does. It's the opening words to Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. So if we think about this for a moment, John is writing his gospel, his story of Jesus, and he decides to start by quoting the beginning of Genesis. Now, this would be like if I wanted to write a novel, and I decided to begin it with, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Now, generally speaking, this is not a good idea. Because if I thought I was another Charles Dickens, maybe I'd have a couple books written by now. But the same thing with John. Except John does think that he is writing a new Genesis. He, he is starting his gospel at the very beginning. And if you were to read through the entire Gospel of John, you would find that he does believe he is starting a new beginning, a new beginning of history, a, a new beginning of humanity, a new beginning of God's involvement in your life, in my life, and in the life of creation. John's story is about Jesus, who, and he designs it from beginning to end, not just to tell us about the life of Jesus, but to invoke this feeling of a, of a living promise that has come to each of us all. The beginning of human history in, with, under, and through Jesus Christ. And that's why he patterns his gospel after Genesis. That's why he records the miracles that Jesus gives. That's why he sets things up in a way where we really see how close Jesus is to God through the resurrection. Such an important part of the Gospel of John. That's why the resurrection happens in a garden to remind us of the Garden of Eden. So we see the resurrection as a new beginning, a new creation. It's just so amazing how everything comes together for the Gospel of John. And we are now here, January 
3rd, 2021, getting ready for a new beginning, leaving behind 2020, leaving behind and bringing with us only the things that we need to have a successful and fruitful year. I don't know if you are someone who writes down goals for the year or maybe New Year's resolutions or if you're the type of person just to wait and see what happens, but I'm the type of person who typically writes down my goals. And quite honestly, around May of this past year, I totally threw my goals out the window. I just wanted to get through and survive 2020. But now in 2020, one, I have this new energy, I have this new excitement, I think there are certain things, when we read through today's gospel, there are certain things that we will find that will open up the possibilities for a new beginning for all of us in 2021. First, John describes Jesus as the Word of God. And if we actually look at the full verse, we see that John designs this in a certain way to show us that the Word of God is a purpose of God. That John takes this word and he uses this word to communicate with us so that we can clearly see how important this word is to us. John encourages us to use our words to express ourselves to each other, to express ourselves to God. John shows how this is done throughout the entirety of his gospel. We see this is what Jesus does. Jesus is God's word, and Jesus promises to us that God is speaking clearly as possible to each and every one of us. God in Jesus is doing something new. Now, in the earlier days, God gave the law and the prophets expressions of God's will. But now God is going a step further to speak to us directly, to speak to us personally, to tell us what our calling is in life. This word opens up the possibilities of us having a new and vibrant relationship with God. John tells us that no one has ever seen God. That's something that is true. But when something happens to us, when tragedy strikes, when we get a dose of bad news, when hope and happiness leave our lives, when we wonder where God is, we can see God in the Word of God, which is why the Word is made flesh. This is why Jesus came to the earth to show us God's love. Not just to show us God loves, but to let us know that there is nothing God wouldn't do, nowhere God wouldn't go, Nothing God wouldn't endure to show us, to be with us, to love us. Even to the point of giving God's one and only Son to death so that we know that we no longer have to worry about death, that God is there with us. God wants us to know that we are worthy. God wants us to know that we are loved. God wants us to know that no matter what has happened to us in our lives, that God forgives us, that we are children of God. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? Our lives matter to God. There's no small, too small of a worry. There's no too challenge that is too great. God is there for us to take on anything we bring to God. The fact that God loves us so much, the fact that God wants the best for us, it just excites me a little bit more for the beginning of this year. I remember the beginning of 2020. I remember thinking, this is a new decade. This is going to be a new me. I went so far to look over the next 10 years of my life and to think, where do I want to be at the beginning of 10 years? Then I decided to work back and say, okay, if I want to get there in 10 years, I need to be here in five years. If I want to be here in five years, I need to be here in three years. I I knew what I needed to do. I remember thinking at the beginning of 2020 that I was going to have the best year ever. I was looking at the successes of our church, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Kensington, Connecticut. 
I was looking at the successes we've had. I, I was looking at the growth we experienced. And to be honest with you, one of my goals for 2020 was to have over 100 people in church on Easter Sunday. That would have blown all the numbers out of the water for our small congregation. I was planning a big art project that everyone could be involved with. It was going to be great. It was going to be fabulous. We were going to have so much fun together. And we just started to roll things out. And then March came. And as we know, everything changed in March. But now, as we begin in the beginning of 2021, I'm starting to feel like we can move forward now with new energy, with a new purpose. And I don't know what to expect this Easter. I don't even know if we're going to be able to meet in person this Easter yet. We'll see what happens. I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that we can. <clears throat> but what I do know is that I still have hope. What I do know is I still have joy. I have the love and forgiveness of God in my life. And I am able to share that with you through this virtual experience. I'm able to share that with people that I come in contact with. I'm ready to put so much of t what happened in 2020 behind me. There are so many memories that I am going to hold on to that are going to be good memories. There's so many memories that I can take out of 2021 that I can be thankful for. Because right now, in this moment, it is our turn to write a new beginning. A, a, a new gospel, so to speak, for our lives. We have an opportunity to include God in our story. We have an opportunity to tell of God's wonder in our life. To look forward to 2021 and know that good things are going to happen, both for us as individuals, but also as for the church. We are learning so much more about the church. There are so many more opportunities for us in the church. So I would love to hear what you have planned for 2021. As I said, I am excited for this year. Every year I pick a, a word that kind of leads me and guides me, kind of like the star that the good chef, that the three wise men are following. And we'll talk about that next week a little bit. But my word for 2021 is focus. I want to focus on the good things in life. I want to focus on the activities that I'm involved with. I want to focus on God this year. Not that I haven't done that in years past, but I really want to do that this year. And I encourage you to think of a word that maybe will lead you and guide you in your life. I invite you to share that word with me when you think of it so that we can be a support with and for one another this year. One of the best years ever. The best is yet to come. Amen. Jesus, your 
Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in a delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illnesses. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness, especially those we name out loud or in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of the darkness and of the light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor you, your image in one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wasn't that a wonderful worship service? Thank you again so much for joining us. And there's going to be a lot happening this first quarter of 2021 for all of you who have connected in one way or another with the ministry at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. So go ahead and like our Facebook page because I will be rolling out a lot of this stuff in the next week or so. Um, there's a couple more details I need to put together, but there are lots of things for you to participate in life in the ministry of Prince of Peace. And you can do that in a virtual way. A lot of these things I'm setting up to be virtual because we're not really sure where things are headed with the coronavirus. I know that things are getting so much better now that the vaccines are coming out, but I still want opportunities for us all to be able to engage in a safe way right now. So 
go ahead and like our Facebook page and then you will have all the updated information as to what is happening in the Ministry of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Kensington, Connecticut. Thank you so much again for joining and I hope you have a great week. Be blessed. Shine in our hearts, shine through the dark.